Hey guys, and welcome back to another Katia V5 tutorial. This is part two of the aircraft design series, and to, in the last one, if you remember, what I did is I showed you how to create the fuselage uh, using wireframe uh, to create surfaces using essentially a, a structural element called lofting. In this episode, what I'm going to be showing you guys is how to do the wings, and the wings are basically done on the exact same principles as the fuselage, but they are more tricky due to the fact that, uh, number one, um, it's not a continuous cross-section by any means, and uh, the geometry on it does actually quite vary. And For example, on this wing here, we have geometric twists going down the wing, so it twists around the chord uh, axis. But invariably, it is uh, the same process. It just takes a little bit longer, and it's a little bit more complicated. So what I'm first going to do is I'm just going to hide everything else so we can kind of focus on the wings. Uh, and open up the wings to see uh, the innards of it. So exactly the same as fuselage. We've, I've cut it down into kind of nice, neat chunks so you can kind of see uh, each individual part. Uh, so we'll start off with the center air force of this bit here. So first things first, what we will need is uh, the airfoil in question. So this wing was created with um, the airfoil, it's a supercritical airfoil uh, done by NASA. If you pop this into Google uh, and pop Air 4 Tools behind it, it will come up with this page here. Now Air 4 Tools is an incredibly useful uh, site. Uh, and it will give you all of the data that you possibly need. I, I've gone through this in a previous video. It will give you the DAT file, so it will give you the, all of the um, points for this area for here. Uh, it will also give you some of the, uh, the technical data as well. So in order to get these points here into CATIA, uh, we're going to use an export tool from Excel. Uh, and I've showed you this in a previous video. Uh, so all we do is copy and paste the points into, uh, into into the macro book. This one here is something that I've developed a bit further to allow us to be able to use um, uh, basically put some modifiers in. So all we have here is uh, an x, y, and a z coordinate, and these are the ones that are going to be transferred into Katia. And these points are really just based on the coordinates from Air 4 Tools from the DAT file. Um, and modified by multiplying it up in certain locations from these modifiers. So for the root airfoil, uh, which is this one here, the right in the center, it's, it's the easiest one to do because we know what the chord is. It's uh, the same as the root airfoil from the specification, which is 7.6 meters. The span is zero because, remember, we're going to be putting it all in compared to this global axis system here. Um, the Z offset, now that's uh, where we're going to be going on, is, is a bit trickier because the Z offset in this case, we want uh, the bottom of the wing to be in line with the bottom of the fuselage. So we need to shift it down by at least half of this amount of the, the fuselage here, which was two meters, so it's an extra meter, but also then the thickness of the aerofoil itself. So the thickness of this particular airfoil is 0.1. So what that, what that means is, is the thickness of the airfoil at this position here, the thickest part, is 10% of the length. So if it's 10% of the length uh, and it's 7,600 millimeters long, it's going to be 760 millimeters high. So half of the fuselage diameter coupled with the thickness of the um, the aerofoil gives it to an offset of about 1800. Now that was kind of tweaked a little bit just to make sure it was nicely in line uh, with with the fuselage here. Now the root, root apex distance, what that means is uh, this point here, this, this, this apex of the wing, uh, that's the distance from that point to this point here in along the x direction and that basically just shifts the entire aerofoil to this location here which is where we want it. Oh. The other parameters here, dihedral, sweep back angle and the sweep kink span, uh, those are all kind of defunct in this particular position because we don't need them yet. They're all modifiers uh, which are d dependent on span. So with those kind of modifiers in action, you can kind of see that that's how they are they're derived. The span will be zero, that's the y, 
uh, and this is the coordinate based on the uh, the Aeroflow coordinates. We click export, we use just one of the points, which is what I always use. Click OK, and what it starts to do is import it into Katia. Okay, so those points have been put into Katia, so as you can see, there they are. Uh, so they've landed exactly in the position we needed to. I'm just going to hide the fuselage quickly. So any eagle-eyed viewers were going on a minute, they don't look right at all. And you are, you're correct, actually. These, these aren't in the correct position in terms of the relation to the wing. So uh, these are the ones we just came in, so I'm going to hide them. And I'll show you where the points were originally. So these are the original points. And you can see they're exactly the same. So they were then added to a spline. So a spline was created from those points. And like you said, you can see here, that this particular spline doesn't conform to this surface here. So the reason for that is uh, the wings, when they are next to the fuselage, aren't flat. So this is a flat, completely flat aerofoil. And it's not a flat aerofoil in reality. It's actually got a setting angle. So there's actually an angle of attack. Um, so there's an, these are twisted compared to the fuselage of 3.1 degrees. It's actually a little bit less than that. After a bit of analysis, it actually turned out to be a bit less. I think it's about 2.2 degrees or something like that. So it was actually rotated. So this is the rotated version of, uh, of this spline here. So it's just this spline rotated. There you go, 2.18 degrees. And the way this was done is you just create an axis and a point, so an axis and angle. The axis was created around the quarter chord position. So a quarter of the way between the front of the aerofoil and the back. So once that rotation had been created, as you can kind of see, what was then actually shown is that you can kind of see it's not even there uh, quite yet. It's actually not as thick as we wanted it to be. Again, the reason to this is halfway through the design process, uh, it was just shown that this wasn't quite as thick as we wanted it to be, as in it's not as fat. So instead of kind of changing, going and importing, finding a brand new aerofoil, what we did is did an affinity. And what an affinity does is it quite, it quite literally scales up in particular axes. So in this case, what we did is we scaled it up to 1.35 from the Z location, and that just kind of chunks it out. And this is given two reasons. Number one, uh, we want to have a nice lift uh, on the aircraft when it's taking off, but also we want it to be strong when it comes to the actual structure of the uh, of the wing and being thicker will allow us to put a bit more structure in it. Now there is another operation which is the translate and that was again done uh, after the affinity and what it does is it just shifts it up. Again this was kind of done with a with, with a certain amount of kind of jiggery pokery uh, and it just translated up something like yeah 30 millimeters not a huge amount and what that meant is that it didn't poke out of the fuselage. And that is how you make an aerofoil for the route. Now that's the simplest one you can get. Uh, in terms of the next one we're going to do, which is the root aerofoil. Now the root aerofoil is the one which is right at the end of the uh, the fuselage. It's the one that's it's the closest part to the fuselage, as you can kind of see here. Ooh. That's the root aerofoil. So the way you do it is exactly the same way as the centre aerofoil. The only difference in this case is the span. So the span will be the radius of the fuselage, in this case, which was 2050, I believe. Uh, let's just go to the yeah, check. 4.1, so yes, it will be 2.05 meters. Uh, and that's it. Everything else is exactly the same. There is no, no difference in this. So we click Export again. And you end up with what we saw earlier, which was uh, a set of points. Now, the process of getting this into the same configuration as this is exactly the same. So we create the spline with the points. Uh, we then rotated it around the core to core position. We then created an affinity to beef it out a little bit. And then we translated it up by 30 millimeters to get it to the correct location. Now, you're asking me, hang on a minute, why couldn't we just translate this one here to that position there, be so much easier. And, uh, yes, you're right. You're absolutely right. The only problem with that is, is that if at any point in the design process I want to change this one, but not that one, or vice versa, then I've got to go and design the entire thing all over again. Designing two of the same type, although it takes a little bit longer at the beginning, and not that much longer as you already know how to do it, will save a vast amount of time when it comes to 
any decisions or differences you make later on in the process. So that's the root error fault. Now the next point, uh, the next two error faults, there's only three error faults that make up this wing. Uh, the next one here is the kink error foil. And this one is, is a little bit trickier. So the difficulty in the kink is not necessarily in the CAD bit, but it's more in just making sure that all of these values in the import are correct. Now the way you work all of this out is by some trigonometry. So um, the chord of the kink was calculated to be about 4.8 to five meters. Uh, the span again was, was already calculated uh, and the Z offset is a constant. Uh, along with all these other ones here, these are all constants and the different difference being is that the X offset due to sweep is dependent on the span and it's dependent on the sweep back angle. So the sweep back angle again, which was defined by the specification, what it will do is if a bit of trigonometry will set it backwards and give you a new offset for that location. At the same time, you've also got di dihedral, so dihedral was set as 5.6 degrees. Um, so that will move the airfoil up in the Z direction. So this again was dependent on the span and that dihedral angle, and that gives us the offset. Take that away from the other two constants, and that gives us a brand new offset of Z. So these three values then can be plugged into the R X, Y, and Z coordinates. So we click export. and out pops the points that we have. So these are the points for the kink. So they're in the correct position, well, sort of, as exactly the same as the root error force. What we need to do is then, um, well, number one, create a spline. Uh, and then we create another point and in the center or the cortical position and rotate it. In this situation though, the amount we actually uh, rotate it is the other way around and this is the reason for that because it's got uh, in our specification the wing distance is minus 3.5 degrees uh, geometrically linear which means that it by the point it kind of uh, from here to here uh, the difference if you measure the two uh, points will be minus 3.5 in difference so the kink here our angle is going to be minus 3.1.34 the reason it doesn't say minus here is because it's uh, it depends on what Katia thinks uh, and that is, honestly is is it. So with uh, with the rotate done, and the two splines done, we have our kink aerofoil. So that's the kink done. The final one to do then is the tip aerofoil, and using exactly the same uh, ideas as uh, the kink and the root, it's just by popping in uh, the rest of these dimensions here. So the chord would be uh, what it says on the specifications the spans, the Z offsets and everything else will all be done for us and it's exactly the same as everything else and we get that little tip right there so uh, I'm just going to hide those two there and those are our tips so those are that's all we need It's four sections for our, our wing and that is it so from the error four sections themselves all we have to do then is create a set of guides so the guides are pretty simple, um, there's just three lines, so we've got the, the lines at the back and one line at the front. The reason there's two lines at the back is if we zoom in on the aerofoil you'll notice that there's this gap essentially uh, and we just need to join up the top and the bottom. So the two rear or trailing edge lines, all I've done is created two poly lines to create those three points. For the leading edge, what I've done is I had to create three points for the forwardmost part of, of each of the aerofoils. Now because obviously aerofoils twist, this changes, so I had to create three new extremums, uh, or points via extremums should I say. So it's just quite literally using each aerofoil, using the direction of X and making it so that it's, it's the furthest forward position on that aerofoil. And using that you can kind of see how the wing twists due to what that, that, that twist we put on it, so the, the change in the angle of attack of the wing due to that twist. And that's actually quite an important feature, especially uh, on modern aircraft. So with those three done, all that needs, was needed to do was create a spline from those three points, and there you have your wireframe. So from that wireframe there, all you need to do is create a, uh, I created two actually, I created one multi-section surface for the center wing box, 
uh, and one for the outer. The reason being is that otherwise you get this kind of weird bend going on here, which you don't really want. And the second moist section surface is exactly the same as what a fuselage was, using each of the profiles and then each of the guides that we created in order to make that surface. Now to make the other side, uh, which is commonly done in aerospace, all I did then was create a symmetry. So a symmetry of these two moist section surfaces uh, just to mirror it round to make two, because there's no point doing all of it, which mean, it also means that if any of the changes I make on any of these bits here will be reflected on this side here. So it's not an issue of oh, if I want to change that part of the wing, because I, I want both wings to be exactly the same. And that is really how you make the wings. So it's not as difficult as one might seem, but it still does take quite a considerable amount of care just to make sure that all of the actual parameters for that wing are the same. Now, I'm just going to get rid of uh, all of this. I do have wing tips on this. So the wing tips, which I again have done in a previous video and were made in exactly the same way, are just another set of, um, of wireframe. Uh, the difference being is I've used a completely different aerofoil. The aerofoil in question is a NACA 0012, I believe. Uh, so, so this creates basically a symmetrical aerofoil. Uh, and in the same way of the, the video, which, which I've shown you before, uh, it's just a simple matter of creating uh, several sections of these up the actual um, wingtip in order to create this uh, nice swept curve. So that's kind of the end of the video for the kind of the basics of, the vi of making a wing. Now, in terms of melding or, or assembling this to the fuselage, generally in terms of a master's uh, or, or a master geometry file, you kind of leave it as this. You have a kind of it going through the model. Now, when you actually make uh, the wings structurally, Generally, what happens is you kind of have this part here and this part here of the of the aerofoil, the root, is kind of reserved for the leading edge and the landing gear. So the only part that actually goes through the fuselage is the structural element. So what you need to do um, before you go ahead and, and understand how you assemble these together is it's more that's more down to the specific and detailed design of the structure of the wing, which I'm hoping to get into in a further video down the line, but it is quite complicated and takes quite a bit of preparation to do so. So I hope that's kind of giving a good detailed approach to how to make wings for uh, an aircraft. You should be able to use that to create any sort of wings that you need just by doing different sections um, at different points. The, key, the key lies in making sure that you plan out in advance what you want it to look like. So if you have enjoyed this video, please do go ahead and give me a like. And if you'd like to see even more than that, please do go ahead and subscribe. There should be more videos coming up in the future. If you have any questions or queries on what I've said today, or anything that's not quite clear, please do just drop me a comment in the bottom and I'll try and get back to you as soon as I can. If not, then thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you guys next time. Cheerio.